What's up golfers? Today I'm going to share with you three exercises you need to cut out doing altogether or types of exercises you need to stop doing and I'm going to share with you the replacements for those three exercises. You'll have seen these exercises in the gym or on Instagram or wherever on socials um, with golfers you know trying to show you exercises to better your golf performance but a lot of them don't really have much merit in terms of proving that they increase golf performance. It's very easy to sort of sell them as golf performance exercises because they look like the golf swing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to move the needle for you in terms of golf performance. We're talking When we're talking golf performance, that's more about club head speed. We want to do exercises that are actually going to give you a lot more carryover or functional carryover towards increasing club head speed. Uh, the first set type of exercises is the instability training or stability training. So I don't want to just pick on the BOSU ball here, but the big Swiss or stability balls, they're not terrible in and of themselves. They can be great for rehab purposes or doing some stability training, but marketing that or selling that as a golf performance exercise, it's not necessarily going to be the, the best thing for you. So again, if I'm here's the reason why. If I'm standing on this BOSU ball, if I'm standing two-footed or so say I'm standing on one foot and I'm trying to actually make a, a turn or some kind of rotation that you might have seen something like this, you know, maybe I'm throwing a medicine ball here or trying to, you know, mimic a golf swing. As soon as I start to rotate on here, my brain's going to say, whoa, wait a second, I'm standing on a marshmallow here and you want me to, to rotate and, and coordinate this golf-like movement? I'm going to limit that. My brain's going to say, I'm going to put a governor on that, limit that movement because job number one, don't fall over. Brain's number one priority is to protect you at all times. So if it senses a loss of balance, your writing reflexes, I'm not going to walk around like this all day. My brain's head's always going to want to be level with the horizon. So your writing reflexes are going to take over and your brain's going to say, you know, just do whatever you can to not lose balance. Okay, so it's going to limit you. So it's going to put a governor on how much you'll actually be able to do. So I'll, if I want to stand on it, even if I want to flip it, same thing, if I put two feet on it, and then I'm standing this way, so now it's, it's tippy as well, it's going to put a limit on how much I can actually, I'm on a flatter surface, but it's still wobbly. So if I'm trying to generate power here, you know, it's, it's again, I'm standing on a marshmallow, okay? Um, it's, it's not going to be, I can't, I've got nothing to push against. So I can't create a lot of speed, I can't do the things that I need to in the golf swing, all right, to be able to generate power and speed. So. For rehab purposes, you know, if I, if I break a foot, sprain an ankle, is it going to be beneficial to stand on one of these? Yeah, probably, okay, for some time. But if I want to actually improve golf performance, increase club head speed, let's ditch the instability tools and do something that's actually going to move the needle for you in terms of golf performance. So the squat is probably, or split squat variations of, okay, exercises that are going to actually help you push and create ground forces. Squat, main pro tips we want are feet somewhere between hip and shoulder width apart depending on the size of your pelvis and all those kinds of things. You just want to find a, a width of stance that's going to allow you to squat you know the, the deepest. Okay when I'm unloaded it's okay if I round here a little bit when I've got a load. We don't want too much, we don't want any rounding in the back. So a position that allows me a width of stance that allows me to get those hips as deep as you know tops of the kneecaps, okay? So choose the right width of stance to allow you to get that depth. Screw your feet into the ground. When I say screw your feet into the ground, imagine your right foot is a screwdriver and your left foot's a screwdriver. Right foot, clockwise. Left foot, counterclockwise, into the ground. Imagine there's a sheet of cardboard under your, under your feet and it's perforated in the middle. Screw your feet into the ground, again, right foot clockwise, left foot counterclockwise, and you're trying to tear that sheet along the perforation. So I'm screwing the feet into the ground. You can see when I do that, my knees push out to the sides, and I'm going to drive the hips down and back and squat into it, okay? So learning how to squat properly, pushing against the ground to drive up, whether you've got a, a, a dumbbell here, okay? Goblet hold, you can progress it. If you're not used to lifting weights, start with body weight, work down to a chair, start with it, then you can Build yourself up to using a weight, okay? Barbell on the back, front squat, whatever you're going to do, learn to get stronger in the squatting motion because that essentially is going to help you put 
force down through the ground, okay, to stand back up. That is going to be the best alternative to training on an unstable surface, okay? So that's number one. If you guys, I hope you guys are finding these tips helpful, okay? Give us a subscribe, that would help us out a lot too, all right? So exercise number two is going to be anything that looks golf-like, okay? So if I just take a dumbbell, all right, I'm gonna just take this back, swing it, and I'm gonna swing through. Oh, this dumbbell's heavier, so, you know, it's gonna pull me into the back swing, and it's gonna, I'm gonna have to push into the ground, it's gonna pull me into the follow-through. Is it gonna be bad for me? Maybe, maybe not. Is it gonna help my swing speed? Not really, probably not. What are the two things that we've shown, based on our research of over 10,000 golfers so far, the two biggest causative predictors of club head speed. So this is not just a correlation. This is if you increase your vertical peak power or ability to jump, vertical power through the ground with your legs, and horizontal power with your arms, if you can throw an object really far, you swing club faster. Okay, the fastest swingers in our database all have high vertical jumps and great chest pass numbers, okay? Those things are predictors of club head speed, not being able to like take a dumbbell and, or a medicine ball and just throw it this way, okay? We've tried, we've tried testing medicine balls and throwing them and all kinds of things and it didn't make people slower, but it didn't make them appreciably a lot faster, okay? It was the jumps and the chest passes. So what can you do instead of any kind of golf swing-like exercise? Learn to do a counter movement jump, okay? So. This would be a great superset with your squat. Right after the squat, have your arms up. You're going to throw the arms down, hinge the hips back, and then explode to the ground and jump up. Catch yourself and, and you know, it's nice and soft. We should have a quiet landing, so it's down up, catch yourself. Okay, how much force can you put down through the ground? So if you're not able to put force through the ground quickly with speed, that's going to be a, a real uh, killer when it comes to trying to create ground reaction forces to move the club faster, okay? Because you need that force through the ground to create movement through the torso, hips, and then through the arms and shoulders. So that would be for the lower body, upper body, anything when you're, where you're pushing, all right? Chances are if you're doing this rotary exercise, how many strict push-ups can you do? Boom, knock them out, down, up, chest touching the floor, keeping that solid plank, screwing your hands into the floor. So just like my feet, right hand screws clockwise, left hand counterclockwise, pull down, up, okay? You should be able to do 10, 15, 20, 30 push-ups, no problem, okay? If you're struggling to do five or 10 strict push-ups, you definitely are lacking in terms of the vertical peak power, okay? So pushing exercises, also pulling exercises. So anything where we're pushing or pulling with the upper body, it's gonna help increase that club head speed. All right, so that's exercise number two. Number three on the list, and again, probably gonna get a lot of flack from this from the haters, okay? The Palov press, this would be typically attached at a low end or a medium anchor point. I'm just gonna press out at either a cable machine or a, a band. I'm gonna to have to do an anti-rotation move and resist that, that force trying to pull me into rotation. It's not a bad exercise, okay? I'm not bashing the pal off press. It can be a great, you know, it's a good core exercise. I'm trying to resist the amount of rotation, okay? What we found, though, in a study was that an eccentric overload, okay, is going to have a much more, much bigger impact on increasing club head speed than just a static hold is going to, okay? So an eccentric overload, we use eccentric flywheels. I don't have one right here, but they're fantastic. If you can get one, I highly recommend it. Um, they've been around for decades. That's what we use to keep astronauts from atrophying in space because we needed something where they could actually um, exercise their muscles in zero gravity. So you would pull on this cable attached to a flywheel and it would, it would pull back with more force than you put into it. So that was how you could actually get an uh, overload stimulus in a zero gravity environment. So we don't, I don't have that right here. So I've got a, a band, you could use a cable machine on, to improvise. Cable machine's great because you can actually put more weight on it. The key here is to have enough of a load, enough stretch on the band or a heavy enough band 
enough weight on the cable that you cannot pull it down all the way down towards, you know, just outside your hip. So this is a good amount of resistance for me. It's really hard with, with straight arms of mine you to, to pull all the way down to my hips. So I've got to pull it into here, close arms, turn my chest, press it down to here. So now from here, I'm going to slowly do the reverse motion while I'm kind of lowering the weight or having the arms come back up to here, back to the chest, turn, boom. So I'm overloading my eccentric part of the exercise. So it's not the chop down, it's the low, it's kind of the reverse motion on the way back up. I'm overloading that motion and I really feel that all through here. So that eccentric overload is where I'm going to get the benefits, okay? Again, nothing wrong with the Palaf press, but if you're looking for club head speed, hit the eccentric overload, okay? So those three exercises, hope you guys found the alternatives. Those are the ones that you're going to want to go to time and time again for club head speed. Hope you guys found this helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.